Welcome to Reflecting Light. This podcast is about feeling the world with light by exploring myth, ancient texts, scripture, great works of world literature, and the works of artists, past and present, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And now, here is your host, Mandy Green. Hello, welcome to Reflecting Light. It's wonderful to be with you in this amazing Christmas season. I don't know who this podcast is for, but when I went to record this morning, the entire thing was revamped. We'll revisit the podcast I had planned about the Bread of Life another week. But this one is inspired by a stroll I took last night in Luminaria with my family. Luminaria is a beautiful light show put on by Thanksgiving Point in Utah. And you go through these different lands and there's different types of lighting. And it's just truly enchanting. It's beautiful. The most beautiful part of it is the permanent sculpture display of the life of the Savior Jesus Christ. And it's entitled The Light of the World. And I love going to this event simply to walk around to see in large format some scenes depicting the the life and works of Jesus Christ. And it always gets me in the Christmas spirit. It's kind of the perfect combination of beauty and fun and whimsical and being a kid again. Right toward the end of the path I was walking through, there was this bulby kind of rainbow-colored curtain that you would walk through. And I was just there. Everyone was walking ahead of me, and I was just taking in the magic of Christmas, of having those I love around me. And very, very faintly through the bushes, I heard one of my favorite songs in the universe. And it was just like this beautiful moment where heaven reaches out and lets you know that they're aware of you and that they're thinking of you and they know you. Let me share you the words from the song. Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. And rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told and some choose to believe it. But I know they're wrong. Wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the morning star? Somebody thought of that and someone believed it. Look what it's done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? And what do we think we might see? Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. All of us under its spell, we know that it's probably magic. Have you been half asleep? And have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name. Is this the sweet sound that calls the young sailors? The voice might be one and the same. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. It's something that I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. I am a long time lover of all things Muppets. My very first memory of shoe buying was a pair of Miss Piggy, white Miss Piggy tennis shoes that I wore. They were barely attached at the toe in the hill, and I wore them until they were just decimated. I have very fond memories of those shoes. Paul Williams, who collaborated with Jim Henson on writing the song, said, the thing that is so human about the song and spiritual at the same time is that it honors the questions, not the answers. That moment made Kermit not the mentor, not the teacher, nor the preacher. He became a seeker with the audience. Oh, that's beautiful. The humanities is all a study about asking the right kinds of questions. 
And maybe that's why I'm so drawn to it, because I feel the spiritual search is the same thing. It's all about asking the right kinds of questions. It's about the journey. It's about who's on the journey with you. It's about the beauty and the things you learn as you're on that journey. Today, I felt prompted to share with you the magic of Jim Henson. Christmas is such an amazing time to get out, to enjoy the magic, to be caught up in it, to dazzle at twinkling lights and be with those you love and take pleasure in the simple things and to laugh and to get rid of some of this crazy, crazy weight that seems to just grow in size and magnitude this year with last year. So today we're just going to take a moment and examine some of the quotes in life of one of our world's greatest creators, Jim Henson. Now, like I said, I grew up on The Muppet Show. It was on every single night. I watched it every night. And I don't know what it was. Something in my young heart just gravitated toward it. Uh, Gonzo exploding out of the cannon, the bad jokes, the crusty old men who cracked themselves up. The electric mayhem. Has there ever been a better name for a band? I don't think so. I mean, Loaded Diaper and Mouse Rat are, are great, but nothing compared to the electric mayhem. And in the middle of all this crazy, zany, funny chaos, there was this essential goodness. There was this essential purity. Kermit the Frog said, have what Jim Henson liked to call ridiculous optimism. Without it, we wouldn't have this amazing world we live in. If you're not familiar with the Muppets, well, you have a treat in store for you. And if you are longtime Muppet lovers, we're just going to take a beautiful stroll down memory lane. And if you're newer and the Muppets aren't part of your childhood, go watch a Muppet movie. Go watch the new Muppet movies that just came out and just remember what it's like to be a kid. Remember what it's like to make Christmas chains and color gingerbread men and make messy sugar cookies and laugh till you cry or just stop and pause at something beautiful or a sunset or a kid running up to a statue of Jesus, whatever it is. Today is all about taking those magical moments and enjoying them. Now, Dave Goals had this wonderful quote about what it was like to be on The Muppet Show. And this is what he said. The game on The Muppet Show was to upstage as much as you could. Jim loved upstaging and he would reward you for it. I remember during the instrumental break on a production number featuring Miss Piggy, I had my character lean over the balcony backwards and play a trumpet solo upside down. And Jim was in hysterics. It was great to have a boss who really sanctioned and encouraged anarchy. And Jim, to that adds, there's a sense of our characters caring for each other and having respect for each other. A positive feeling, a positive view of life. That's the key to everything we do. I believe that everything we do should have some part of that. Sometimes we're too heavy in terms of ourselves and trying to carry an idea and telling kids what life is about, I often have to tell myself that too. We really do get heavy. And the Muppets are such a beautiful reminder to not take ourselves so damn seriously. Frank Oz, who is the voice of Miss Piggy and Fozzie and many other just iconic characters in the Muppet universe, he added, whenever characters become self-important or sentimental in the Muppets, there's always another character to blow them up immediately. <laughs> I love that. I don't, I don't even know what their explosion slash pyrotechnics budget was, but it was pretty, it was pretty great. I mean, you have a character whose only job is to blow things up. So there you have it. Jim continues on. I've always tried to present a positive view of the world in my work. It's so much easier to be negative and cynical and predict doom for the world than it is to try and figure out how to make things better. We have an obligation to do the latter. 
I know it's easier to portray a world filled with cynicism and anger, where problems are solved with violence. It's an easy out. What's a whole lot tougher is to offer alternatives, to present other ways conflicts can be resolved, and to show you can have a positive impact on your world. To do that, you have to put yourself out on a limb, take chances, and run the risk of being called a do-gooder. If our message is anything, it's a positive approach to life, that life is basically good, people are basically good. I can't help but think of what our world lost when Jim passed to the other side. He had such a presence about him. It was gentle. It was fun. It was childlike. He wasn't afraid to be called a do-gooder or to look naive or childlike. He just put his gifts out into the world, and I'm so grateful for that. He also had a particular gift for reminding us to laugh, for reminding us that life is good and people are good. Miss Piggy was the first feminist I had ever known, long before I even came across the term. And I was a big fan of her swift kick or her hi -ya. I mean, that is how I memorized the Hebrew verb to be. The essence of beingness is haya in Hebrew. And all I have to do is picture Miss Piggy. She is the essence of Piggy and haya -ness. I did suffer a defeat. I just, in doing my research a couple of weeks ago, just found out that the fabulous baseball diamond isn't even real. I've grown up my whole life thinking that Lady Holiday had the fabulous baseball diamond. She was such a joy. That water ballet in The Great Muppet Caper is one of the most iconic things I've ever seen. And to see Charles Groban singing Happiness, Miss Piggy. Is it any wonder then that I married a man named Brent Green? who in so many ways is a reflection of Kermit. In fact, our wedding cake toppers were the salt and pepper shakers of Kermit and Piggy that I found at a store. Yes, it's true. And Brent really is. I have to give Brent a shout out. He really is the Kermit at the end of my rainbow. He's the one who juggles and tries to manage the anarchy of the green home. I'm so grateful for his constancy and his remarkable kindness. Jim said, Kermit's function on this show is very much like my own in that he's trying to hold together this group of crazies. And that's not unlike what I do. <laughs> I would have to agree with that. Fran Brill, who was the first female Muppeteer on the cast said, he was truly a gentle man. He treated everyone the same, whether they were the head of the network or the fellow who emptied the trash. He also loved what he did. And when you made him laugh, it felt like Christmas. I think of that last line all the time. Getting my husband to laugh does feel like Christmas. Or have you ever been around someone who's laughter? I have a friend, Katie Campbell, her laughter feels like Christmas. Or my husband has a couple of friends that if he gets on the phone with them, I just want to be in the audience. Laughter truly is a gift, my friends. It's so important to laugh. It's so important to let those, I don't even know what I would call them, belly laughs. I My laughs like morphed into this horrible wheeze as of the last couple of years. And yet laughter is such a gift. I I hope you'll take a minute as you remind yourself to enjoy life and remind yourself of the beauty of the inner child inside of you that you'll take this chance to laugh. And here's a few lines from The Muppet Show. I don't care what you think of me unless you think I'm awesome, in which case you are right. Of course, that's from Miss Piggy. See if you can see who said this one. It seems the words on my coffee mug are right. It is hard to soar with eagles when you work with turkeys. <laughs> That's Sam the American Eagle. I'll never forget watching Fozzie sing the song, I've Got Rhythm with Rolf the Dog. And he never could get it right. So Rolf grabs the music, writes one word, hands it back to Fozzie. And Fozzie says, I don't got rhythm. 
And then they continued on with the song. And if you've never seen Beaker, the Swedish chef in Animal Sing, Oh Danny Boy, that's your homework assignment. I'm not sure you should go on one more minute without stopping what you're doing and listening to that. That is the essence of all of this crazy, fun, zany, positive anarchy. I'll put the link in the show notes. I just grabbed it. It has 13 million views. And here's Gonzo's line from the last episode I watched. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I will eat this rubber tire to the music, the flight of the bumblebee. (laughs) Jim has to say, when you trick people into laughing at themselves, that's wit. If you don't laugh at yourself, everything becomes heavy. There's great value in being able to step back and laugh at yourself, at life and at attitudes. Laughter helps you put everything into perspective. He continues on, watch out for each other, love everyone and forgive everyone, including yourself. Forgive your anger, forgive your guilt, your shame, your sadness. Embrace and open up your love, your joy, your truth, and most especially, your heart. Frank Oz had this to say about Jim, and I think this goes along with this this sense of wonder and laughter and, and love and positivity that pervades of what I'm trying to speak to today. He said, many people see Jim as an extraordinary creator, and I realize that I see Jim first as an appreciator. He appreciated so much. He loved London. He loved walking on the heath. He loved Parliament Hill, flying kites. He appreciated his family and his colleagues and his Muppet family, and he appreciated the performance and design of a puppet. He appreciated the detail on a Persian rug. He appreciated beauty. I really don't believe that Jim could have been such an extraordinary creator if he hadn't been such an extraordinary appreciator. Jim says, I spend a few minutes in meditation and prayer each morning. I find this really helps me to start the day with a good frame of reference. As part of my prayers, I thank whoever is helping me. I'm sure that somebody or something is. I love that. I express gratitude for all my blessings and try to forgive the people that I'm feeling negative toward. I try hard not to judge anyone, and I try to bless everyone who is part of my life, particularly anyone with whom I'm having problems. Well, the proof is in the pudding, and he's such a great example to me of looking for the good, focusing on the good. In the mid-1990s, I was called on a mission to Russia, and I have always wanted to serve a mission And yet, as it got closer, I became a little bit more terrified. (laughs) And I have to say that the song by Gonzo that my beautiful little sister, Aubrey, shared at my farewell helped get me through some of those tougher times. And it really speaks to this deeper spirituality. And I'd love to share it with you today. This looks familiar, vaguely familiar, almost unreal, Yet, it's too soon to feel yet, close to my soul, and yet so far away, I'm going to go back there someday. Sun rises, night falls, sometimes the sky calls, is that a song there, and do I belong there? I've never been there, but I know the way, I'm going to go back there someday. Come and go with me. It's more fun to share. We'll both be completely at home in midair. We're flying, not walking, on featherless wings. We can hold on to love like invisible strings. There's not a word yet for old friends who've just met. Part heaven, part space. Or have I found my place? You can just visit, but I plan to stay. I'm going to go back there someday. Jim said, when I was young, my ambition was to be one of the people who made a difference in the world. 
My hope is to leave the world a little better for having been there. Here's some simple advice. Always be yourself. Never take yourself too seriously. And beware of advice from experts, pigs, and members of parliament. (laughs) And finally, he said, I really do believe that all of you are at the beginning of a wonderful journey. As you start traveling down that road of life, remember this. There are never enough comfort stops. The places you're going to are never on the map. And once you get that map out, you won't be able to refold it no matter how smart you are. So forget the map, roll down the windows, and whenever you can, pull over and have a picnic with a pig. And if you can help it, never fly as cargo. My dear friends, today's podcast is a reminder to remember the magic, to keep the good magic alive, to keep that child inside of you breathing and thriving and aware and awake to the wonders around you, to laugh, to forgive, to love, to dance, and to stop for a moment, whether it's on the path of a lit garden or under a tree, or with someone you love, stop for a moment and appreciate the magnificent life you've been given, the wonderful people in that life, and the good that assuredly and absolutely still exists in this world. Surrender to your inner child and drink in life. What a beautiful season to do this in. Jim, Thank you. Thank you for all you've brought to this world. And to all of you beautiful listeners, thank you for all the good and wonder you you bring to our world as well. I wish you love, light, the rainbow connection, and perhaps a little bit of manamana. Happy Christmas. Thank you for joining us for Reflecting Light with Mandy Green. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave a good rating and share it with your friends. And remember, your light makes the world a brighter place. Share it.